My name is Rich. I'm with Sandow Construction, and we are a residential contractor out of Savage. However, we're a small contractor, so in between building homes, what we do is do maintenance type items like windows, doors, siding, projects like that for regular maintenance on homes. Who's here for, to learn about windows today? <laughs> I'm assuming everybody. <laughs> uh, so how do you know when your windows uh, need to be replaced? You can probably look at a couple of different things here. First of all, you can look at windows. Windows should at least last for the lifetime or for the warranty period. Most windows are warranted for 20 years. Some windows are now warranted for lifetime. In fact, those because people change houses, not only are they warranted for lifetime, they're also transferable warranties for the next owner of the home. So that's a kind of an important thing to remember. Notice the two windows here. One window is foggy, one window isn't. When you have fog or moisture in between the window panes, there is no argon or, or gas left in there and it's leaking, the seals are leaking. And you have two options at that time, either replace the glass pane, the glass unit itself, or if the window's old and at its maximum life, then you might replace the window as a whole. A lot of issues that can happen on the, are on the exterior. We've all had wood windows, and wood windows have a certain lifetime, and once they reach probably 30, 40 years, you might have to look at the exterior because they are pine most times, and the, the exterior is getting to start to rot. And if you have that in a window, you probably want to replace the window because you, that window frame is going. Yes? I'm sorry, could you just turn the mic? Uh, oh. well, welcome to come up a little closer. Please come up, yeah. There's lots of seats here. <clears throat> We've been doing a lot of shows. We were at U.S. Bank Stadium uh, last weekend, so I'm still a little hoarse from that, talking like every day for three days. <clears throat> so, and if you have questions at any time, just raise your hand, um, and we'll just continue. You can, uh, by replacing your windows, you can actually reduce your heating bill by up to 20%. If you had like a single pane window that had maybe a storm window on the outside, by putting in a modern window that has insulated glass, where you have either double or triple pane glass, uh, you could save up to 20%. This is one of the newer kinds. This is actually a triple pane glass. And actually, you're open to come up here and look at them in a bit. And the one thing that separates this out is something that's a little bit different. It's a super spacer like this. It's not, most windows have metal spacing the glass. This is a piece of silicone. These panels have silicone spacing the glass. It's much more efficient. It doesn't connect hot and cold. And they actually, windows with this kind of a spacer meet Energy Star standards today. When you buy windows, you want to buy one that's rated for Energy Star. And on the way out, I have some forms over there that are going to be all about the Energy Star program that you can take with you. So most uh, window companies will that the, our quality window company will sign up to be with the Energy Star program. Just like appliances, windows and doors are Energy Star rated. Uh, that's a division of the government. So they rate the windows. In order to be rated, they also have to use the NFRC, which is it's really the fancy word is National Fenestration Rating Council. But they're essentially the body that rates the windows from that manufacturer to make sure that what they say about that window is true. So they certify the window as being actually to meet those standards. So the Energy Star standards got more strict in January of 2006, meaning the windows had to be more efficient. Um, they got a lot, they went up by about 10% more efficiency was required in a window. You notice that we are, our northern climate is in the blue climate. And actually right there it says you're supposed to have a, a, a Energy Star rating for U factor, and U factor is like the insulating factor. U factor keeps hot and cold separated. Keeps the heat out in the summer, keeps the heat in in the winter between those glass panes. And that's a U factor. The lower the number, the better. And, and all these numbers are on those sheets right there. And that's, when you buy a window, that's really what you want to buy. First of all, you want to buy an efficient window. And whether it's a wood window, a fiberglass window, a vinyl window, no matter what, what it's made out of, you want to pay attention to the glass unit, part of it, and make sure you're getting the Energy Star efficiency. Number one, Energy Star. I blew it up a little bit bigger so you can see it. 0.27 is the Energy Star standard. So it needs to meet that number or lower. Now with this, 
kind of a window here with, this, with the gray spacer, silicone spacer. This one meets 0.27. Some manufacturers get it down to 0.26. This window right here with three panes of glass will meet 0.19. That's, even, that's like 35% more efficient. And a lot of people in our climate like a triple pane window. So this is an example of an Energy Star label. And anytime you buy a window, whoever's selling you a window should be able to show you the ratings of the window before you buy it. You want to know. When you get the window, you'll see the ratings on a label just like this. That's the Energy Star label. You notice the U factor 0.27. Uh, another thing that you want to look at that's very important is air leakage. How much air can come around the seals of a window? You don't want drafty windows. That's an extremely important factor. I'll show you a little more about that right now. But you notice this, this label has the Energy Star symbol on it, and it has the NFRC symbol on it, the National Fenestration, Ra National Fenestration Rating Council. You know that window is now certified to, to have those numbers exactly. It's not somebody's wishful thinking. Those are actually numbers that have been tested. Okay, here's now, this is the air infiltration. Let's get a little more specific about that. Windows are tested at 25 mile per hour wind loads in, a, in, in testing situations. And the Energy Star standard says you can't have more, more than 0.3 CFM. Well, that's equivalent to like two and a quarter gallons of air coming around the seals of a window per minute. That's gallons per minute. That's a lot of air. And that's the Energy Star standard, believe it or not. A good window will be up in here, 0.02 CFM, 15 times better than the Energy Star standard. And why is that important? Because you don't want drafts coming in your house. And a lot of times when you, uh, especially if you have uh, oh, bathroom fans uh, exhausting air, kitchen fans exhausting air, you're creating a vacuum in your house. And so, you're, so you have the ability to suck air, more air around windows. So you want to keep that to a minimum. A good window should be up in this range right here, 0.02 to 0.05 CFM, and you have a pretty airtight window. So let's review the label now, the factors on the label. So we talked about the U factor, we talked about air infiltration, and these explain everything here. And by the way, all these forms I'm showing you are right here over here, so you can pick up one of each on your way out. And you'll, you'll have all those things that you need to know, all the education you need to know about having an Energy Star efficient window. Uh, condensation resistance, and that number, that one says 61, the higher the number, the better. Condensation resistance. In our climate, we've all seen on very cold days a little bit of moisture on the bottom of the window. When I grew up, we had single pane windows and storm windows. We didn't have moisture, we had ice <laughs> in northern Minnesota on the bottom two inches of the window. We used to play in it, make scratch little designs in the ice. But when that melts, that drops down onto wood. If you had wood windows, and in in the windows in our house were wood, after a while the wood starts to get mold and melt away on the inside. And you don't want that. So there's only one, if you like wood windows and you like the, the beauty of real wood, this is my suggestion. Buy a window that has triple pane glass. With triple pane glass, you get basically next to no condensation inside. Even on the coldest days of winter, you, at the most you might get a little space of, of just moisture, but you'll never have any ice or anything like that. And that will, that will protect the investment in the wood. Because wood windows are 35 to 40% more costly than most other windows. Uh, so you want to protect that investment. By the way, the triple pane, the term for that is TLA, which means triple pane. The L stands for low E coating. All windows have a low E coating inside the glass. It's a sprayed on coating. And then A stands for argon. They're argon filled chambers. The whole chamber inside between the glasses is argon filled. And when you have a triple pane window, you have two chambers that are argon filled. That, that's what makes it more efficient. Basically, here's the structure difference. So you see, you notice you have the three panes separated by a piece of glass, or the piece of glass, or, and then the silicone spacers. So you have double pane, DLA, or triple pane, TLA. You can also get a gas called Krypton. But if you do, Superman will never visit your house. <laughs> but besides that, Krypton is very expensive, and it's probably not worth the price to upcharge to pay for it, uh, in most cases, because you're going to pay dearly for the upcharge in price, and you're only going to gain about three hundredths of a percent in U-factor. So you're going to go down three, po three points in U-factor, like from 19 down to 17 or 16. Probably not worth the investment. Typically, a double pane versus a triple pane, how much more expensive are the triple panes? It depends on the manufacturer. Uh, manufacturers that make their own glass in-house, they put together the things, are usually more economical 
in purchasing because they control the cost. Most window companies buy their window units already made, the glass, insulated glass units already made. We all know Anderson, Pella, Marvin, they're all our neighbors right in here, regional companies. They all buy their uh, glass from Cardinal Glass Company, who makes it for them. And then they put it together. There's some manufacturers that have, uh, like I said, put together their own glass, and you'll find much more uh, economical triple pane. And in fact, this time of year, you will also find it's a good time of year to be looking at windows. A lot of window contractors actually give you a free upgrade to triple pane as an incentive to, be, to think about investing in windows now as opposed to waiting until the middle of the year. Another thing you want to think about as far as investing in, in the windows and when to invest in them, if you're talking to a contractor, any contractor that could probably start within a week, you might be shy away from. Why isn't he doing a lot of work? Most, most window companies that do work are probably lined up six weeks out or seven weeks out, something like that, where they keep the workflow going. Anybody that can start right away is the guy that's not working. Is the triple paint as good as the double paint in terms of longevity? <coughs> Sealed? Uh, yes. In fact, windows that use this stainless steel spacer have a warranty of 20 years because the argon does leak around the stainless steel. And after about, it leaks on a sliding scale because as a percentage of what's left, so it's a sliding scale out. So you can probably get 30 years, maybe 33 years out of a window, and then you'll start seeing the cloudiness in between the panes. It's time to either change the glass or change the windows. Windows that use this silicone spacer, warranty the window for life. Warranty the glass unit for life. Transferable. The last windows you ever buy. We, as a man, yes? I look at some windows, Glass gets back there. None of those rails are filled with all of those empty voids. Some of them will have foam. Some have foam. Uh, How do they measure that uh, for energy efficiency? Uh, well, dead airspace actually works pretty good. Some windows, uh, some window manufacturers have multiple chambers, so you get a lot of honeycomb in the framework. Some fill all the holes with as many as they can. Sometimes you need hardware in some of the slots, but. Some of them fill all the spaces with foam, and some of them fill only a couple with the foam, a couple of spaces. But dead air also, multiple dead air chambers is also a good insulator. Uh, so the window, when windows are tested for the efficiency, by the way, they test the whole window, not just the glass. They need, the, the standards say you test the whole window for the efficiency. Uh, it doesn't matter. Two of the companies that we, the two of our favorite window companies that we do it, we replacement windows for use this. That's why they're our favorite, number one. The warranties are for life, transferable, and you don't get issues with this glass unit. They don't fail. Very seldom do they ever fail. And then uh, we have one window company that makes vinyl windows. They fill every chamber with a foam that they can. Another window that we sell that's our favorite only fills two of them in a point in the middle of the window. And believe it or not, the one that has only the two chambers filled is actually a little slightly more efficient, not much, but just a slightly more efficient than the one that has all the, what, all the chambers filled. And it's not necessarily, it's, it, it's more things than just filling the chamber, it's the whole window, how it's built. So, I mean, there's extra factors. In fact, the one window that has less foam filling actually has more chambers. And it becomes, it actually ends up being a little more efficient. Any other questions? So what are the companies that make the windows that you like, the two that you like the best? Pardon? company, what's the company name or the window name? Uh, well, I guess we can say it. <laughs> uh, we like soft light windows and another company that we like is Provia. Those are two long-standing companies. They both are, they're vinyl windows. Provia makes a, a vinyl window that, that can be, I say just triple paint and it's wood on the inside. It's a vinyl frame with wood on the inside for people that like wood windows. That's two of our favorites. And Beechworth is another window company by James Hardy that also uses a spacer. That's our third favorite. And that's a wood interior window. Beach what? Beach worth. Wood. Yeah, like beach, like the tree. Worth, like W O R T H. It's a James Hardy company. How does it, how is Provia spelled? P R O V uh, I A. Like professional way. Pro via professional way. It's a Mennonite company out of uh, Oyster, Ohio. Iowa. I know one of your signs up there said quality brand. You know, when you're talking about the uh, energy factors and things, what determines a quality vinyl versus a 
what, here's what I would look at uh, for a window. I would look at, first of all, the warranty on the window. If it's a quality window, if it's a vinyl window, and it's a quality window, it's going to be warranted for life. And they usually warranty everything, hardware, glass, everything. Now, it's probably the most important thing you want to do is look at. Second thing is, is, is the warranty transferable for the next owner of the house? If you're looking at a product that has those two things, you're probably looking at a product that's built well, made to last, or the company's not going to be around. And there are a lot of vinyl window companies. And there's a lot of different uh, companies around. They come and go, too. So when you look for, here's another key factor. If you're looking for a contractor to, in to install windows for you, look for a contractor to, that has a good long lifetime that's been around for a number of years. Back in 2007, a lot of contractors, the housing market was expanding tremendously. In 2008, the big recession started. The whole housing market flipped upside down. 50% of contractors in Minnesota went out of business. So anybody that has more than 10 years of service is probably going to a company that's learned how to survive. So you pick a company that has longevity. You also, when you pick products, look at how long the company's been around that's making the windows. Is it a window company that's been around for a number of years? You know, like Provia from the 1940s, uh, Softlight from the 1940s, Anderson Windows since I think the late 30s or early 30s. You know, so there's been a, there's a lot of companies around a long time. Look for the longevity in the company. That way, if you have issues, you know that you can probably get a problem taken care of under the warranty. If the company's gone, your warranty's as good as the company. It's gone. Basically, there's four kinds of windows. You have windows that are made out of wood. We all know Anderson, Marvin. They've been making wood windows for years and years, since the 1930s. It's a wood sash, wood frame, and uh, they use double insulated glass now. Uh, wood windows, like I said, are a little more expensive, about 35% than, than your vinyl window. Um, if you uh, look at the warranty on wood windows, they do have maintenance, and what most of the companies now, they clad the exterior of the window with either aluminum or vinyl, so the exterior of the window, even though it's wood, is maintenance free. The interior of the wood, if it's double pane, is going to require some maintenance after five, ten, whatever number of years. If you get some moisture in there, it's going to require having to refinish the window in order to keep mold and mildew from creeping up. Next down is a fiberglass window. In fact, this is a copy. This is the picture you see is actually a fiberglass window. It's a fiberglass frame with a real wood interior. Uh, number of window companies do that. This is actually a Beechworth, I think. But, you know, we have Marvin has that. Uh, Marvin has their uh, fiberglass frame windows. And they, have, they also have another window that's all fiberglass, outside and inside. And the fiberglass inside is even stained to look like uh, wood. Vinyl, we have composites. Renewal by Anderson's probably the best known composite. That's a Fibrex. It's a wood fibers with uh, vinyl mixed together. And then the, the majority of windows are vinyl windows. And the biggest reason for people switching from wood windows to vinyl windows, they don't like to maintain the wood windows on the inside. So if you do like wood windows, remember, get a window with triple pane. But if you don't want to do any maintenance on windows, vinyl is a good way to go because moisture does not affect the vinyl. And, and be careful when you're buying windows. Some, pe some people tend to mislead people by making statements that are general statements. Uh, some will say this, my product is stronger than their other product. But just remember that in order to be certified by the NFRC, the windows have to be tested for strength as well. They have to be uh, hurricane proof uh, for, the, for the major winds. And they t also test for how windows stand up in hot to cold, like in our climate. We can go from minus 30 to 100 degrees and more. Any more questions about windows right now? What about the different types, like double hung, casement, um Sliders. In most cases, most people are already in a house when they're looking for windows, unless you're building a new house, okay? And if you're building a new house, there's probably the plans for that house probably specify what kind of window it is. Uh, so we basically, the casement window, the side hinge, it opens like this. The cousin to that is the awning window that opens from the bottom. The crank out. The other, the next most common window, it's a double hung. Pain slide up and down like this. That cousin is a slider. Pain slide sideways. We all have picture windows. That's what, those are stationary windows. They don't move. They don't open. And when you're looking at uh, cost of windows, you will find that casements are usually the most expensive because of hardware. 
Next are double hungs. Next are sliders. And then the cheapest would be picture windows because they only have frame and glass. They don't have any moving parts. That's the cheapest window. And that's pretty, with any window company, it's going to be about the same. And when you're replacing windows, you're probably going to replace the windows in the house that are in there, the same kind of windows. One, especially in bedrooms, because you have, there's egress codes. In other words, in case of fire or somebody has to get out of the house and out of the bedroom, you have to have a certain size. You have to have 5.7 square feet of opening for people to get through the window in case of fire to exit the house. So in most cases, uh, all the windows have different egress because they, of the way they open. They have the egress sizes. So if the house is made for casement windows, you're probably going to want to keep casement windows in it, especially in the bedrooms. And usually houses are designed to have a certain style architecture that fits, and so you don't want to really like change a lot of the windows around. I mean, we, we just did uh, a couple weeks ago for a house. The lady, had, the house was built with casement windows. She absolutely hated them. So we sold her all double hung windows. And we had to do some adjustments in the bedroom to make sure the windows were big enough. I actually had to make the openings bigger, but it was worth it to her. It was just, she just didn't like casement windows. But you would go through extra cost if you want to change window styles in most cases. Because whenever you move, whenever you change the size of the opening, it gets more costly. So if you're looking for windows, how do you find a window that appeals to you? You can look on the internet. You go to home shows like this. Uh, you can invite, maybe today if you find a contractor, invite them in to show you some different kinds of windows. You invite them into your home. Most times, contractors will go into a house, give you free quotes on windows. Uh, you can also look in magazines. And if, you, if you're on the, if, when you're on the internet, most of the time a, a window manufacturer will refer you on, right from their website to local approved installers for that particular window if you're interested in it. Softlight, Provia, both do that. Anderson does that. Um, so how do you find a contractor? Well, anybody that installs windows is required to have a contractor's license in just about every city in Minnesota. So you want to check to, to, if they have a license. And everybody needs to be licensed by the Minnesota Department of Labor and Industry. And it's available on their website as a search engine. They can make a phone call there. But, but check their license. Uh, check the Better Business Bureau. Is, people know who Angie's List is? Angie's List is a private organization where citizens rate different contractors that have been in their house. And that's one thing you want to look at. Do they have an Angie's List rating? <laughs> Becoming a member of Angie's List, I think it's like $9 a year. So if you're interested in windows, it might be worth $9 or $9.95, whatever it is, to invest in it to find local manufacturers or local contractors. And when, when you want to find a contractor, online research is also a good idea. These days with Google or any of the search engines, if anything, if any company has a, something bad about them, I'll guarantee it'll show up real quick. Here's some questions to ask a contractor now. There's a lot of contractors or, or a lot of window installers, let's say, or window sales companies that will sell you windows. You want to know who's going to put them in because that's just putting them in the correct way is just as important as the window itself in the energy efficiency. So you want to be sure that, you're, that the question you ask is, do you use your own employees to install the windows or do you use subcontractors? With subcontractors, you may not know what you're getting. When, a, when, a sales, when the sales company has its own employees, you know they can control the quality. Of the, of the installation. Second question is, do they have installation masters training? Installation masters is a program that was started in conjunction with the Energy Star program because, like I just said, you could have the best energy efficient window, but if it's not installed correctly, it may not be energy efficient. So there's a school, installation masters, that people can go to to get training for the best methods and practices and, and adherence to codes to install the window correctly. And that's independent of manufacturers. That's just the best methods for installing. Each manufacturer may have certain substandards that they need to, that they want to make sure are required too. And that's why you usually, when you go to a website, you find the approved installers for that particular window if you like it. Because those are the people that have done the factory training. Another thing about a contractor, ask to see their certificate of liability insurance. That's their insurance, their liability insurance. Uh, you want to make sure any contractor has that liability because if they're working on your home and something goes wrong, you want to make sure your, your investment in your house is protected. Some of this, I think I went over final advice, use a contractor that's been around 10 to 15 years at least. That way you know the chances are they're going to be there after. That if you want to need to contact them in the future for something. And like I mentioned before, use the products that have been around for a long time, manufacturers. If the, if the company manufacturing the window has been around for a long time, you know they're probably going to stay around and keep going or keep producing windows. 
No, questions? The ones that have a crank, yeah. Okay. They open, they ver vertically open like this, with the crank on the bottom. Yep. The only okay. One I, call yeah. mm -hmm. yeah. I have a house uh, with a very old, um, I'm not sure how old is the windows, but the house is pretty old. But I have this uh, like double pane window in, yep, double in, the, in the bathroom. But there is no mechanics to hold the lower pen up. I checked the, the with the inspector. I took off the lower pen. Mm -hmm. And there was no mechanics. No mechanics in it? Uh -huh. That's very strange. Because yeah. all windows have mechanics built into yeah, the jams yeah, inside. Yeah, that's what uh, Somebody took it out or something. I'm not sure if it was but that old. Two exactly the same windows in the, in the house. They are all the same. So well, what, what they used to do for mechanics in old windows, depending on how old the house is, the bottom sash would go up. Mm -hmm. And it actually had a rope on it that went around a pulley. And they had weights inside the walls. And a lot of times those ropes would break, and then the window has but no. Those are vinyl windows. You have vinyl windows? Uh-huh. Why? You never saw anything like that? They should have. I would, usually if you open the window, someplace along the rim, you'll see um, part of the sash, you'll see the manufacturer. If it's vinyl, it's probably relative. I would call the manufacturer and ask them if they could supply hardware. So is there any way I can add the mechanics on, or no? I have to change the whole thing? Uh, if you can find, there should be a label inside the window. You see there in the top of the jam? Yeah, I, I or you checked all around, you can't find anything? Uh -huh. Boy, uh, so you might have a window company come out. I would suggest maybe having like a general contractor come out that installs many different kinds of windows. Uh, that way maybe he has the experience enough to tell you what it is, or maybe they could tell you about hardware, if it could be, hardware could be found to fit inside that window. Okay. Any other questions? <coughs> yes. Yeah, we have a, one of the crank out windows. Yes. So the, it's stripped or something. It won't crank out anymore. Mm -hmm. uh, I've looked all around to try to find a manufacturer. I can't find one. On the crank handle, usually right on the very lip, if you look, a lot of times they'll put their name on it. On the crank. Not on the crank itself, right on the little, the little piece of metal right underneath it. You'll see a little stamped right in there. Very, it's very, usually very small and slight, but you might be able to see it there. Otherwise, go on the internet. If you can't find a manufacturer for the window, so you go on the internet and you just start searching for the hardware until you find the hardware that is the same. They usually, they'll have pictures on the internet of the hardware that they're selling. 